In this video, I would like to talk about sig figs, or um, to say the entire phrase, significant figures. So what sig figs tell you is essentially how much information is in a particular measurement. So for example, if I tell you a number like 72.4 meters, um, this has three sig figs. The three sig figs are the seven, the two, and the four. Okay. Um, similarly, if I make some measurements and I report to you 0 0.0724 meters. This also has three sig figs. Um, again, the three sig figs are the seven, the two, and the four. The zero leading out front doesn't really mean anything. Um, I could have that or not have that just depending on my choice of units. If I converted from like meters to millimeters or something, then um, I would not have leading zeros. Um, meanwhile, though, if I report a number that's like 7,240, um, it's not exactly clear how many sig figs this has. So um, it could be three or it could be four because I don't know if I should count the zero or not. So this one is unclear. And so we want to avoid situations like that where it's not really obvious how many significant figures a number has. A different way to write the same piece of information that makes it really clear is by using scientific notation. So if I write 7.24 times 10 to the three meters, now it's not unclear. Now I know there are three sig figs. Um, if, on the other hand, I had put a trailing zero after, so 7.240 times 10 to the 3 meters, then I know there are four sig figs, because I wouldn't write that extra zero unless I knew that that zero was correct. So it isn't just that I didn't measure it to um, one meter accuracy, it was that I, um, like I actually knew that there were no extra uh, meters there. Okay, um, so why does this matter? Why do we care about how many significant figures a number has? Um, there are a few reasons, um, and I'll kind of cycle back to this in a little bit, but essentially when you're doing calculations, you have to think about how much information you really have for uh, um, a particular situation. So let me give you an example. Let me say that I tell you that it is 15 kilometers from where I currently am to Issaquah. So I'm 15 kilometers away. And if I walk to the other end of my house, and like, let's say that's an extra, oh, I don't know, 15 meters away, well, I wouldn't say now I'm 15.015 meters away from Issaquah. Um, I'm still 15 kilometers away. Okay, so um, adding a really, really tiny amount to a number that already was sort of um, an estimate doesn't have any effect at all. Um, we can just ignore that 15 meters because we didn't know the 15 kilometers to five sig figs of, of um, precision. Um, another example is, let's say that I drive about eight miles to work. Okay, um, maybe I know that it's not seven and I know it's not nine, but you know, maybe it could be 7.7 .7 and I have no idea. So it's about eight miles, but I don't know exactly. Um, and let's say that I do that trip um, 1,001 times. Okay, so I know I've gone exactly to work 1,001 times and I want to know how far I've driven to do that. Well, um, you might think, okay, well, I just take eight times 1,001 and I get 8,008. But really, since I didn't know the eight miles that precisely, I should really say that this is about 8,000 miles because that was essentially, the eight miles was essentially only one sig fig. And so my end result after multiplying by 1,001 should really also only be one sig fig. And again, to make this um, clear how many sig figs this is, um, I could do eight times 10 to the three miles. Okay, and then it's really clear that it's just one sig fig. Okay, so there are a lot of rules for how to handle sig figs. Um, and some of them, most of the important ones I'd say, um, are listed in chapter one of the textbook. Um, I think that it is sensible to know the sig fig rules and to use them reasonably. Um, but I also think that it's not strictly necessary. So my controversial opinion, and don't, don't mistake me, this is definitely a controversial opinion among my colleagues. Um, my opinion is that the significant figures are not that interesting. Um, I think that as long as you're being reasonable and you're not writing down eight digits just because your calculator gave you eight digits, or you're not you know, rounding to one sig fig when all of your inputs had like three or four, I think that as long as you're being reasonable, it isn't a big deal to know the exact rules for this. Um, in addition to that, this is essentially just a sort of, I would say again, ham-handed way of handling uncertainties. And we have better ways of thinking about uncertainties in our measurements, which I'll talk about in the next video. So um, stand by for that. So I'm going to say that the lots of rules are optional for this class. Um, the rule of thumb that I really want you to do is just be reasonable. So um, if you already know the rules for significant figures from say a chemistry class or from high school, absolutely feel free to use those. I you know, think that that's a perfectly fine way to go. If this is the first time you're ever hearing of significant figures, then I think that it's okay to just always round to three or so, unless you have some special reason to use more or less. Essentially, just be reasonable.